It is time to kick off another action-packed season of the FARC Smash Beer Low Dollar Series. And as always, our appetizer, the first test of the FARC Cars and Race Trim, is the Apex Racing School Rookie Shootout. 26 of American Stock Car Racing's rising stars will take to the track and fight it out over 20 laps for 25 bonus points and a guaranteed starting spot in the Smash Beer Get Smash 200 right here at Daytona just a couple of days from now. I don't know about you, but I can't think of a better way to kickstart one's fart career. Now let's have a look at the starting lineup. Uh, starting positions for this race are randomly drawn. And drawing the pole would be Laser Motorsports' uh, Jackie Thompson in car number 92. The um, only time this weekend that the second Laser Motorsports car will be on track, they will not be entering car number 92 for the Smash Beer 200. Starting on Thompson's outside will be Farrell Burgundy in number four. Row two, Chuck Johnson and Kira Smith in the third um, Terra International Motorsports car. Row number three, David Lamar and Kirby Krieger. Row four, Thomas Tucker and Trek Togger. First time we've seen Togger on, on the track in about five years. Uh, row number five, Kyler Beetle, Troy Peterson going full time for Dale Clow Racing. Todd Lacey and Liam O'Connor, row six, row seven, Dale Clow himself and Jack Ashcroft in the second Ashcroft car. Row eight, Ronnie Holter for Team Burr and Naomi Alonco for the new Denman Motorsports team. Uh, row number nine, Winston Orwell and Max Chevillin. Row 10, Kenny George III and Stan Coleman. Row 11, Zach Denman and Zidane Quackenbush, the 15-year-old. And now the last two rows, Art Gordon in the primary Laser Motorsports car, number 91. Tiffany Birch in the Green or Die racing entry. And starting shotgun on the field, Rebel Denman and Gio Arias. Let's head to the action now as the pace car leaves the field in the hands of Jackie Thompson in the number 92 for Laser Motorsports. Green flag is in the air, and that's not a very good start for Jackie Thompson as Farrell Burgundy takes off around the outside. Uh, Thompson must have missed a shift or something as they see Kira Smith now following Burgundy around to second place. There goes Chuck Johnson in the 46 as well. Yeah, Thompson's definitely holding up the field as they head out of turn two. And it looks like uh, we got quite a few slow cars at the front of this pack as there's big, big, big wad of cars behind the top four, top five as Burgundy leads the first lap. Now here comes Thomas Tucker in that green car, car number 99. Uh, Tucker was initially held up by the slower cars all the way through turn two, but it didn't take him long to catch the leaders and eventually challenge Burgundy for, uh, for the top spot around the inside. Only car on the inside there. So uh, drafting, didn't, uh, drafting wasn't necessary for Tucker to assume the race lead. Now going on board with uh, Gio, Gio Arias, started in last place and is trying to get to the front of the field, but uh, maybe trying a little too hard as he gets into the back of Zidane Quackenbush. Fortunately, Quackenbush is able to keep it together, but I doubt he's too happy with Gio Arias right now. Four wide is not going to work as Winston Orwell finds out, spinning off the bumper of Todd Lacey. There's Troy Peterson. Hello, Peterson. Uh, spinning himself out, uh, trying to react to this mess. He, uh, he, in fact, got into the back of his car owner, Dale Clow. Clow was held up by the by the 24. Now under caution. First caution, lap four under this caution. Tiffany Birch pulls her 422 car behind the wall. Restart, lap number nine. Thomas Tucker gets away as Chuck Johnson gets a terrible start in that 46 and holds everybody up. But unfortunately for Tucker, while a big start might work at a short track or a speedway, right here at Daytona, everyone's just gonna catch back up. Jack Ashcroft has to pull his 94 car into the pits and he's gonna lose a, he's gonna lose a lap and then fall way behind, likely lose another lap running by himself. Here comes Trek Togger through to second place, the Austrian driver, Trek Togger. Uh, last time he competed in the series was all the way back in 2011. There's a Dane Quackenbush uh, getting into the wall in turn number four. More problems for Quackenbush, but he's still up in this lead group. 
But back to Trek Togger. He went back to Europe to race touring cars after the, the initial park deal didn't work out. But he's back with the new team, the Frey and Saito Group, and a new and a uh, new sponsor, Scorpio Plasma Batteries. And he's trying to get around Thomas Tucker. He's been looking to the inside, but he doesn't have enough momentum or support to get past. Uh, Tucker is just too strong at the moment. Now, when you fall behind at a uh, speedway or a short track, sometimes it can get very lonely, but here at a super speedway, you'll have uh, groups of cars running together no matter where they are in the field. So we've got this five-car group running towards the back, headed by Kyler Spavito, but here comes Jackie Thompson, your pole sitter, with a run on the inside of the 12. A little bit of help from from a Kirby Krieger in that 76 car. That's very clearly a 26 that they just taped over, but... Um, but you can have, uh, you can have fun running with other people, no matter, uh, no matter what position you're in here at Daytona, but, uh, Trek Togger is not having fun right now, getting held up by the double zero of Troy Peterson. Everybody else splits him down the middle, but Togger is gonna be held up by the double zero all the way through turns three and four, and he's gonna fall way behind. And hey, maybe he can join Kira Smith back there, that other yellow car. Maybe you can have fun with her for a while uh, for the rest of this race. Not too many laps to go. It's only a 20-lap race, but Kirby Krieger now falls victim to mechanical troubles. He's very slow on the inside, but he will make it back to the pits without uh, needing a late caution. Thomas Tucker takes the white flag. Once he got out front on lap three, lap four, nobody's been able to touch him. This lead group's been running uh, single file since the restart. And Tucker's, Tucker's just been too strong. There's, there's Chuck Johnson on the inside trying to get a race going with Max Chaville and in the 51, Gio Arias. He got to the front very quickly after the initial start, but everyone has, uh, everyone stalled out in their attempt to catch Thomas Tucker, the younger brother of Ashley Tucker. Tucker has a very safe lead off of turn four. Nobody has the momentum, and Thomas Tucker cruises to a dominating victory. Here in the Apex Racing School Rookie Shootout, with a performance like that, Ashcroft Family Racing has got to be beaming about their chances in the Smash Spear Get Smashed 200. Thomas Tucker is the first to lock himself into a starting spot in the Smash Spear 200, but everybody else must race their way in through qualifying and the Lobo Twin 100s. Stay tuned for more high speed and close racing action from Daytona right here on the Fark Racing Network.